Okay. All right, today we want to talk about soybean varietal response to sapling fenacil, which is sharp and herbicide. And just to give some background information, uh, products that contain sapling fenacil, as mentioned before, one is sharp and herbicide and verdict herbicide by BASF. Verdict has the residual piece as well, which is Outlook, a group 15 herbicide added with the sapling fenacil. Sharpen is just the sapling fenacil alone, and primarily focusing on that for the purpose of this presentation. And just giving some background information about the products, sapling fenacil is a PPO herbicide, uh, provides excellent control of several broadleaf weeds, including mare's tail. And in our area, we have a, a fair amount of glyphosate resistant mare's tail in North Alabama, especially. Uh, Sharpen's an excellent product that works on those mare's tail. Just some important considerations when we're thinking about uh, cyclophenicil or sharpen herbicide. A methylated seed oil is a must when uh, using this product. And size limitations, there are size limitations to particular weeds that you're going after, in particular uh, glyphosate resistant mare's tail uh, at a six inch height. So that's a pretty small weed. People tend to uh, overestimate or underestimate weed size, I should say. So six inches is our size limitation there. And coverage is key. Uh, this is a coverage type product, so you want uh, something that's gonna produce fine uh, droplet spray, something like a, a flat band type nozzle, and a minimum of 15 gallons of water per acre for coverage. You can go more, but I don't wanna see any less than 15 gallons per acre when using a product like this. Just to show some of the utility of this product, look at a plot from Northeast Alabama with uh, heavy mare's tail pressure. Um, that was burned down with Sharpen and a pre-mixture of Sharpen and Roundup or tank mix of, of Sharpen and Roundup. So an ounce of Sharpen and a quart of Roundup to the acre plus the methylated seed oil at a pint per acre. You can see the treated and untreated strips did a very good job of cleaning that plot up. And as I said earlier, six inches is our size limitation. Those mares tail are obviously larger than six inches, so I don't want anybody to see this presentation and leave and say, let's go out and spray mares tail this big. That's not ideal, that's not what we're shooting for. However, this does show some of the utility of the product. This gentleman kind of was in a sticky situation and went out with an ounce of Sharpen, poured around up 15 gallons of water in the methylated seed oil, you can see it cleaned it up very well. It's just showing some of the utility of the product again. It's a great product, but some of the concerns are uh, soybean varietal sensitivity is what we're focusing on today. Just want to highlight some of the plant bite restrictions or uh, minimum pre-plant intervals, I should say, to soybeans when using a uh, sharp and inverted herbicide. Note that on core soils with less than 2% organic matter an ounce of sharpen, you're going to have to wait 30 days to plant soybeans into that. All other soils you can plant right back into it. So in the Tennessee Valley, uh, where I uh, primarily focus my research and my work, or our work, um, on a silt loam type soil, you can use an ounce of sharpen right there uh, at planting or behind the planter and plant right back into it, zero days. But if you're on a sandier type soil, it's gonna be a 30 day plant back. If you go up to an ounce and a half, it's 30 days, and an ounce and a half on something like a silt loam soil would be 14 days. Uh, note the equivalent rates of verdict there. So an ounce of sharp would be uh, the equivalent amount of cyclophenicil to five ounces of verdict. An ounce and a half of sharp would be seven and a half ounces of verdict in the same minimum uh, pre-plant intervals to soybeans there. So some previous testing has been done with this product in looking at uh, soybean varietal sensitivity, some on-farm work in 2010 and 2011. Also some uh, work over at Sand Mountain 2012 and 2013, and really no injury was seen uh, during those tests. Um, but that's something that we didn't know beforehand. Um, it was a, a weather event related is where we see the injury and also soybean variety selection is where the injury came up. But this is pre um, knowing, knowing that information. So no injury was seen during that early testing. And then field reports came out in 2013 of, seeing some soybean injury where this product had been used. And when the field reports started coming in, and Charlie Burmaster uh, decided to do a quick screen of several soybean varieties and see if there was something to this. And the way he conducted this, he planted one row of plots. So each one of these rows uh, denotes a different variety. And he sprayed across these plots 
with a um, plot sprayer for a couple of reps or several reps to have it replicated and spraying across those uh, each uh, soybean variety would have incurred that application and there's treated and untreated portions to be able to see where sensitivity may or may not exist. Huge rainfall event occurred very shortly after planting, something like in the neighborhood of two inches, two inches plus. And after that rainfall event, you can obviously see the difference in some of the varieties where stunting uh, and some mortality occurred within the plots in some of those treated portions and differed between varieties. Note the row here, uh, severely stunted and even um, some that didn't emerge versus some uh, adjacent to it that seemed relatively unaffected. So out of those 23 varieties, six varieties were selected uh, two that were highly sensitive, two moderately sensitive, and two that were not sensitive at all, at all and, and replicated studies were conducted to see where yield loss may or may not be incurred. And in those studies, it was found that an off-label rate of two ounces um, with the weather event taking place at planting, it, uh, a couple of bushels of yield loss did occur. Obviously, in this plot, it looks like more than a couple of a bushel yield loss would have occurred, and that's the, the nature of the weather event, the environmental conditions that surround this product. So more or less weather per se at planting in the, in the neighborhood of rain or when those soybeans are germinating or cracking, we'll talk about that in more detail in just a minute. That's where the injury or yield loss occurs. So it's all about picking the right variety. Well, out of all those varieties selected, uh, very few of those are still on the market. Uh, as we know, Soybeans have a, a high turnover, a lot of new varieties coming out, uh, a lot of the new traded seed, extend uh, traded soybeans and things of that nature. So the last screening that was conducted was 2014 and 2015. I said there's a lot of turnover in varieties and new ones available. So we had an opportunity this past season to uh, conduct a similar screening to the initial uh, 23 variety screen and spray it across the plots that Charlie Burmaster did. So there's a continued need for this and hopefully something we'll do from here on out. So what we did this uh, past season in 2016, uh, we had 64, 64 varieties. So each one of the rows that you see here uh, denotes a different variety. So there's 16 varieties here in the foreground. If you move on down, there's another 16 varieties. Move on down, another 16 varieties, so on and so forth. And this was under a linear irrigation tower at the Tennessee Valley Research and Extension Center so that if we didn't get rainfall, we could uh, irrigate and create the injury in the sensitive varieties. Keep in mind, we're not sure what may or may not be sensitive in these. This is a new screening of 64 varieties. We're not taking these to yield. This is purely observational uh, to see where injury may or may not be occurred. So we had those 64 varieties. We sprayed across them twice for two reps. So we had two reps of treated and untreated with each one of those rows. And it seems like every time we do one of these tests, uh, we spray, we plant, we spray, and then we get a rainfall the next day, which is really nice, works out well for us. It's kind of like maybe if we need a rain, maybe we need to put one of these tests in. Um, but we planted this on May the 11th, 2016, sprayed it an ounce, a half, ounce and a half of sharpen for two reps. And this is on a silt long soil, and I want to note that ounce and a half rate behind the planter or zero day uh, pre-plant interval, that is off label. Uh, so we're not promoting that, but we did that to see where the injury may or may not be incurred on these uh, particular varieties. So we sprayed. Inch and a third rain was incurred the next day. Uh, we really wanted at least two inches, so we waited till the soybeans cracked at that cracking stage, which they're highly susceptible to the herbicide at that point, and the rainfall event that washes that herbicide up around the hypocotyl. You can see that burn and that injury. So we put an additional seven tenths on it cracking for a total of two inches of a rainfall on this plot. This is just a photo showing one of the varieties. If you notice in the uh, foreground and background, um, soybeans are somewhat lush, look pretty healthy, pretty good. Right there in the middle of the row where the shovel is, and that's the treated portion. Outside of that's the untreated portion. You can see the severe stunning that occurred in that particular variety uh, due to that application of saplifenicil and the weather event. Just to kind of highlight that injury, kind of difficult to see here, but you can kind of see some of that speckling or bronzing on that uh, leaf there. Another photo to show that, you see that uh, leaf margin 
uh, there's some of the bronzing, yellowing, speckling there that you would see that kind of look like some of that injury. We have seen injury worse than that, um, but that's uh, typical of the injury we saw on the plot this year where injury was incurred or a varietal response. So as I stated before, it comes down to environmental conditions. Um, you plant, you spray, and if your seed furrow is not closed up very well or you get a huge rainfall and it washes that herbicide up around that germinating seed, that soybean seed as it's imbibing water and starting to germinate, that's when injury can be, incur be incurred. And also if you incur that huge rainfall event after planting and spraying and then uh, soybeans start to crack or just start to emerge and it washes that herbicide up around the hypocol as I stated before, that's where the injury is incurred with a weather event. Some varieties are more inherently tolerant than others, and that's the purpose of this observation in this study. So when we rated these plots, we rated them a couple of times at uh, about 14 days and maybe even further out than that. Um, we used a numbering system. If it fell in a certain number range, we were gonna rate them as you know moderately sensitive, highly sensitive, or not sensitive at all. And after doing that, some came out very close one way or the other to being moderately sensitive to not sensitive or moderately sensitive to highly sensitive. And I really didn't like the way that shook out. So this isn't hard and fast published data, but went back out there and re-rated and looked at them as if maybe a producer would look at them and said, if these were my soybeans, would I say uh, this variety is sensitive, uh, not sensitive, or maybe moderately sensitive? Just looked at it with uh, uh, an observational kind of objective look at the soybeans in the field. So I'll scroll through and scroll back. These are the 64 varieties that we screened this year. And this is kind of the system we came up with. Uh, so several Asgro, Credens, and Hornbeck, Cropland, Mycogen, Progeny, and Pioneer Seed. And came up with a, a system of safe warning or caution. Caution would be moderately sensitive. Safe would be very little sensitivity at all and warning would be highly sensitive. So uh, Sharp and Cyclophenicil, great product. Uh, shouldn't scare anybody out of using it, but also need to be cognizant of what varieties maybe we want to plant when using that product. And that's the nature and the purpose of this test. One thing that I will note, several of these companies do a really good job of already screening their soybeans uh, to Cyclophenicil. And these are the results that we saw at this location under these conditions. We had more weather, uh, per se or less weather, we may have seen more injury with more rainfall, more weather, more uh, extreme environmental conditions, um, less rainfall, less extremes than that. Maybe we would have seen less uh, injury or response. So it all comes down to these environmental conditions. As I said before, these companies that do the screenings, I'll, I'll point out um, Asgro 4632, very popular soybean, uh, very popular soybean in the Tennessee Valley. Asgro rates it as sensitive. Uh, in this test, it came out as moderately sensitive. So they would rate it per se as a warning, whereas we rated it as a caution. I would uh, encourage you to abide by their recommendation. They obviously rated as sensitive for a particular reason. Maybe that was on a sandier soil. Uh, I, I don't know um, the background behind that. I just want to note that if they rated as sensitive, uh, abide by their recommendations due to the fact that it looks like it has potential to be from what they've seen. This is what we saw at our location under these conditions. This is a list that we've come up with uh, for this year and hopefully do it again next year and kind of start developing a database, maybe of some similar varieties, but as these varieties turn over, getting some of the newer varieties in there too, or maybe uh, very little information exists as far as these screens. It seemed to be very helpful to producers. I had several producers comment that they've used this in some of their selection. Several came and walked these plots. Uh, several industry reps came and walked these plots as well and uh, found it to be very beneficial and something we want to continue in the future. Um, that's the, the nature of my talk today and what I wanted to present. And if you have any questions about this or any further uh, things that you'd like to look at in regards to this screening, uh, you can feel free to contact me at the email address or number below.